Next Sunday, our service host will be Bob Griffin, and Don Gibson will be bringing us a message at that service of worship. This week, we're pleased to welcome back to Broadway First Baptist Church, Charlene McAlpin, and I see her there. Um, she was with us last November. Charlene is currently the moderator at Cornerstone Baptist Church, and she's been completing her studies at Providence Seminary. She says she's been excited by her faith journey it's, in, it's been filled with new insights from God's Word and from the many other children uh, of the family of Christ. She has three adult children and three grandchildren, and the youngest of those grandchildren is living with her. So she feels privileged to spend time with that granddaughter and with her mother every day. Um, she also considers it a privilege to share God's word, especially during these trying and historic times. So we welcome you, Charlene, and we look forward to your lesson for us from Jesus' encounters with his first disciples. Let's now turn to worship. The season of Lent has begun. The 40-day journey of preparation for celebrating Christ's victory over death and over sin on our behalf. This Lent in 2021 will be a Lent like no other in living memory for many of us, um, obviously because of the pandemic. We already feel as though we are fasting from so many activities and the routines that have given us pleasure or that bring us comfort. And still we are reminded to turn our thoughts and our spirits to reflect on the defining act of justice and mercy that Jesus completed on the cross. We often think on his mercy, but there was justice to be rendered on that cross as well for our sins. And so we have Lent, which reminds us to pray, to render a just acknowledgement to God before God for all that he has done for us, and to fast to bring a fairer balance back into our self-indulgences and to give freely of ourselves in order to contribute to a fairer distribution to those around us in need. So the psalm which is used in our call of worship this morning is Psalm 25. It sums up the point of Lent in a different way. It says, show us your ways, O Lord, teach us your paths. Lent is our journey back to God, and it can seem like a weighty journey, especially in a year as heavy as this past year has been, when we see all around us the failures of our stewardship of this planet and of our care for our fellow citizens. 
But then there's Easter, and the beginning of Psalm 25 uh, puts it beautifully. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Will you pray with me? We come as we are before you, Heavenly Father, in all our various states of sickness and health, of worry and wondering about what the future holds. May this time of gathering together as a family before you be a time of reflection and refreshment. We pray that you fill us anew with a sense of commitment and commission to bring your justice and your mercy back with renewed strength into our lives and into the lives of those whose paths we cross. For we pray in your Son's name. Amen. Just before we turn to our Lenten reading with Barbara and Brent, it's time to raise our voices together in song. And so as John brings up the words on your screens, a word as to what hymn we are about to sing. It's a song of confession with words that are associated with Lent. The melody has been a favorite of mine since I first learned it in a church just down the road from here, All Saints Anglican. The composer is a famous Englishman, Charles Perry, and the melody that he has written swoops and soars. And I thought you would uh, recall it. Uh, we sang it this morning before the service, and Tracy doesn't recall it. Um, Bob and Kent were game, and so I'm going to let Kent play the entire melody through. And afterwards, you can say, oh yeah, I remember singing that. Or you can say, I I've never heard it before, but hopefully, uh, the melody will become familiar to you as we sing five verses. Dear Father, Lord of humankind,
morning. Uh, Deacons have asked if I would do a little bit of an introduction about the Lenten readings, as this is something new. Uh, Kent has already, or Raymond has already uh, spoken about Lent and how we period of a time to reflect on our lives and how we're doing in our walk with Jesus. So I won't say too much more about that. I'll just say that uh, the format that we will take is we will have a leader and we'll have the congregation. Uh, like a typical responsorial psalm or any reading that we do, uh, I will be the leader. And uh, for recording purposes, Brent will act as a congregation. But we invite each of you to read along with the PowerPoints that will be put up uh, with your mics muted, of course. Uh, but we hope that you will participate and enter into this. And, and in the middle of the reading, there will be a short period of time for a reflective prayer. Um, don't panic. Just tell Jesus what's on your heart or what the reading that we've done has maybe brought to our mind or whatever. It's just an opportunity uh, to take a few, uh, just a few moments of silent prayer in the midst of preparing our hearts for Lent. And then after any time of confession, it's always appropriate to have an assurance of forgiveness. For uh, John tells us in his first letter that if we are faithful to uh, confess our sins that God will forgive us and that he will restore our righteousness. And, and so the reading will conclude with an assurance of salvation. So let's begin the first confession of, of our Lenten season. Jesus says, the time is ready. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Oh, come, let us return unto our God, who will have mercy and abundantly pardon. Let us pray. Most holy God, we admit to you and each other that we are so dazzled by the false gods of this age that we find it hard to recognize who we are, where we came from, or where we are going. We easily become caught up in selfishness, seduced by cynicism, waylaid by glittering consumerism, and led by the nose along the highways and byways created by powerful vested interests. Please open our eyes that we may see ourselves more clearly and seek you more diligently. We will have 45 seconds of silent contemplation and prayer. Most loving God, arrest the false gods that have diverted us. Show us the deceits that have blurred our vision. Unmask the poverty of our goals and longings. Expose the cheap values that parade as virtues. Save us from permitting a rift between Christ and us. And deliver us from cheap guilt and trivial remorse. Please bring us to an honest repentance the forgiveness of sins, and the renewal of our faith and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Fellow travelers on the road to Easter, always remember that there is much more forgiveness in God than we could ever exhaust. Receive from God through the grace of Christ, the blessing of sins forgiven, and a right relationship restored. Amen. Amen. By grace, we are saved through faith. Thanks be to God now and forever. Shall we pray? Father God, thank you that we gather in your name this morning. Thank you for this body of Broadway First Baptist Church. Thank you, Lord, that we do gather 
in this location, but all over Winnipeg and even further to share in your word, to share in your love and to share in fellowship with one another. I think sometimes we don't realize, Lord, how blessed we are that we have one another. Sometimes it's so easy to see the things that we disagree with instead of the things that we do agree with. And that your love is more powerful than anything that we can dislike. We are blessed people. We are blessed because we have you. We have your son Jesus who died upon the cross and rose again. And we do have each other. And we can encourage one another. We can pray for one another. We can lift one another up. We know there's times that are difficult. Times that are, can get us angry and, and frustrated and challenged. And yet, Lord, we look to you to take us through the challenges of life to the difficulties that are there, whether we like it or not. Yet, Lord, we know that we can hold onto your hand and that you will guide us and lead us and direct us. Father, we think of those in our midst that are going through difficult times, Lord, whether it be financial or health or whatever those times are. And we pray, Lord, that you being the God of all comfort can bring comfort to our lives and, and, and hope. And that we know that no matter what we go through, we, we are not separated from the love of Christ. Lord, I do pray that your hand would be upon those who are experiencing difficulty in health. Lord, comfort, give them strength and guidance. Give them encouragement that you are there. And for all those difficult times, Lord, give us that encouragement that you're leading us. And Father, this morning we are having a business meeting and, and we know that they're, they're not always fun, but they're necessary. So open our ears, Lord, open our hearts to what is being presented. And give us guidance and wisdom. And Lord, we are grateful for Charlene and that she's going to speak to us to, today. And we were blessed the last time she was with us. And Lord, give her wisdom, guidance as well. And the words that is coming out of her mouth is words that we need to hear. And may, may we take them to heart. And we open our ears to your word. And that you will speak to us, Lord. And, and just yeah, be with Charlene. We thank you for the love that she has for you. And Lord, we do this because of you. We want to bring glory and honor, Lord, to you. Not to Cornerstone, not to Broadway, but to you and you alone. And we thank you that we can share in fellowship again with one another. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> The scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 1, verses 35 to 42. And at Charlene's request, I'm reading from the New King James Version. The first disciples. Again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples. And looking at Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and seeing them following, said to them, what do you seek? They said to him, Rabbi, which is to say when translated teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Now it was about the 10th hour. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And now when Jesus looked at him, he said, You are Simon, the son of Jonah. You shall be called Cephas, which is translated a stone. The word of God. 
as we prepare to listen to the message that Charlene will bring to us based on the passage of scripture that we just heard Susan share, we're going to sing together again. And it's a song entitled, Will You Come and Follow Me? I think it was my wife, Tracy, who first taught me this song when she was preparing a children's feature when we used to meet in the corner over there. And it certainly has a childlike sound to it. The words are inspired by Jesus' words in that part of John's Gospel that we just heard. Will you come and follow me? Thank you everybody and thank you for again this opportunity to bring a message to this wonderful group of people um, I really enjoy bringing the message and there's some lovely familiar faces that I remember from the last time I was here as well as uh, some of the ladies that we gather together when we do our, our women in focus meetings so thanks again for allowing me to bring this message to you. I'd like to start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day, and we thank you for this opportunity to gather together. Lord, we know that you are here in our midst, and we welcome you, and we pray that these words that I speak would be your words spoken through me, and that hearts and minds would be open to hear your message, and that we would bring it into our lives and bring it into our daily rememberings of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so, yes, we are here the first Sunday of Lent. And when it comes to Lent, it's something that I personally really enjoy, I, I look forward to this time of year because it's a time when we prepare for Easter. I believe that we're pretty fortunate right now to be living in this time of the kingdom because we know about the resurrection story. We know that Jesus does take over death and he is raised again, but I don't think we should discount the message. We need to remember the message of Jesus, despite our familiarity with this story. We need to take this time, these 40 days before Easter, 
to prepare. This is a time of pre preparation. We prepare our hearts, we prepare our minds, we prepare our bodies because something great is happening in our lives. So this is what we see in our scripture reading this morning. We are, we're learning about Jesus as he begins his ministry. Now, before Jesus started his ministry, there was John the Baptist. And John the Baptist was doing just what we're doing this week, these weeks before Easter, is preparing a way. He was preparing a way for God to come and be with us, for God to come and bring in his message. And these verses that tell us about Jesus' start of the ministry are, again, something that's familiar to many of us. And in fact, many of the other Gospels have this story in there, but John tells it just a little differently, which is part of why I personally really enjoy the Gospel of John, because it comes at things a little differently and causes us to really stop and think about what we're reading. You see, John the Baptist, he was set apart. He was different from the people around him. He, he wore different kinds of clothes. He ate different kinds of food. And he had a different message. His message to the people at the time was to repent, to turn away from your sinful dealings, from your sinful nature, and turn to God, and God would forgive. And so he was doing this. I mean, it wasn't just one or two days that he was doing this. He was doing this for quite some time. So he did have some followers, some disciples but they were also being prepared. They were prepared for something else. So when in verse 37, we read that he said, this is the Lamb of God, those disciples heard him because they were prepared to hear him. When we're prepared, we can hear the message. If we're caught up in our own daily lives and stresses and worries, you can miss things. And like I said, if we kind of forget because we know this story so well and we just let the time pass by and you know things happen and life happens, well, no, we need to stop and prepare ourselves so we can hear this message. And when we hear the message, what's the response? We can carry on in that same verse. The two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. So the response when you hear the message is to follow. Like I said, there's other gospels that talk about this call. And in Matthew chapter four, we read about this call. When Jesus calls his disciples, these first disciples, he's walking along the Sea of Galilee and he sees them because they're fishermen. So they're on the sea and they're, you know, they're mending their nets. And he says to them, come and follow me. And in verse 20, it says, they immediately left their nets and followed him. Again, he's continuing to walk down and he sees there's a family business there. And in verse 22, after he calls them, immediately they left their boat and their father and they followed him. So when you can hear the message, when you're prepared to hear the message and you hear the call of Jesus, you waste no time. Immediately you come and you follow Jesus. As we carry on in our verses back in John, when we come to verse 38, it says, Jesus turned and saw them following. So again, that's great news that when Jesus realizes, he recognizes that we're following him, he turns and he sees us when we seek after him. While I was preparing for this message, I'm um, subscribed to Right Now Media. And on that uh, platform, there's many, it's like Netflix for uh, the Christian. And so there's lots of um, movies and different sermon series. And there's one sermon series by Joe Boyd called The Bible Experiment. And in there he does 
a uh, one-man show kind of thing of the different books of the Bible, and he does this Gospel of John. And when he comes to this part, he kind of makes a little joke when he says, you know, they hear that this is Jesus, the Lamb of God, and they start to follow him. And he says, in our day, we call that stalking. Now, it's kind of a, a funny little twist on the story that they would be stalking Jesus and kind of, you know, in the bushes behind, oh, where is he going? What's he doing? But in reality, we are not stalking Jesus. In fact, we are seeking Jesus. We're seeking his leading. We're seeking his knowledge. And that's why I chose the New King James version of these verses. Because when Jesus turns to them, he says, what do you seek? Because we are seekers. At this time of Lent, I think we really need to contemplate that question. What do we seek from Jesus? What are our hearts longing for that only Jesus can fill? And that's why we take this time at Lent to prepare ourselves to really look at what is important in our lives and what we want from Jesus. What are we seeking? So when he asks, what do you seek? We tell Jesus our needs. He wants to hear from us. He wants to know what we want and how he can bring us that peace and understanding. So these disciples, as we carry on, and really all of us are seeking knowledge from Jesus as they call him rabbi. Now, as we carry on in here, we see how there's little brackets after they call him rabbi, he says, which is to be translated as teacher. Now, what I think is very interesting also about John's gospel is that he's writing to a Greek audience rather than just a Jewish audience. And so when it comes to these terms like rabbi and messiah, he needs to translate that for the readers because they don't really know what rabbi means. And really, for us, I think this translation also needs to tell us about the respect that that term means. When they call him rabbi, they're showing him great respect. He is a teacher, but he's a master teacher. He knows so much that they want to learn from him. And they ask him, where are you staying? Because when it comes to learning from a rabbi, you are actually in, it's, it's almost like school, like I'm studying at Providence right now, and you go to classes and, you know, the classes last for an hour, an hour and a half, and, and you're sitting in your seats and you're listening to the professor. But when it came to that time, the rabbis would be teaching and they would be almost living with them. They'd be spending days upon days in the same room. So that's why they ask, where are you staying so that we can come and know more? And again, when I say that we need to contemplate these questions, where is Jesus staying in your life? Is he staying in your heart? Is he staying with you so that you can learn from the master, teacher, rabbi that Jesus is? I think we need to remember that, especially at this time of Lent. Where are you staying, Jesus? And we come to verse 39, the title of my message, which he says, come and see. And so when we're prepared, we're prepared to hear. We hear the message and we follow Jesus and we ask him, what can we learn from you, Jesus? And Jesus answers us. James chapter 1 verse 5 is perfect right here. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach and it will be given to him. Jesus answers our prayers when we ask for knowledge, when we ask for more information, if we can get more of Jesus in our lives. He says yes, and he will. 
he says, come and see. There's another time in the scriptures where we read the words, come and see. That's later on in John's gospel, where he talks about the Samaritan woman at the well. You see, Jesus is traveling through the land and he comes to a place where there's a well and people usually would come. They don't have um, their taps and things in their homes. They have to go to a common place to get their water for the day. And when they come, he comes to this well, there's a young woman there and he speaks with her and she is first of all, very confused because at the time, you know, men don't really talk to women and really Jesus is Jewish and she's a Samaritan and those two don't usually get along. And so she's kind of confused, but she speaks to him. In fact, they have a really deep conversation about water. And once he lets her know who he is, and he tells her about her life and that that life is a forgiven life and that she can drink from the water of everlasting, that she'll never be thirsty again. She shares that. She leaves her water bucket. John chapter 4, verse 28 and 29 tells us that she leaves her bucket behind and went into the city and said to the men, come see a man who has told me all the things I've ever did. Could this be the Christ? So when she calls out, come and see, it's come and see Jesus because Jesus knows everything I've ever done. And yet he still loves me. And yet he's willing to provide everything for my needs, for that, her need of the water and for our need of knowledge and for understanding and for love and for peace. So when we hear the good news, we want to share it. And we see that also in our passage. If we continue back into verse 40 and 41, we hear that Andrew wants to share this message with his brother. It says, one of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his own brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. So he knows, he hears this wonderful news that the Messiah has come, the Christ. Again, John is translating it for his readers and we know the word Christ or Messiah means chosen one, that Jesus was the chosen one and they had found him, that he had called them, come and see, come and learn. It was interesting when I, I read in here, it says we have found the Messiah. And about 21 years ago, I found that I was a little, you know, I had some indigestion and you know and I was getting a little thick around the waist and you know what I'd found that maybe I'm pregnant and so my daughter Eureka is her name and Eureka means I found it I found the reason why I was having these these physical problems in my body but I found it is something that we exclaim and we tell people I have found something that I've never seen before, something that brings me peace and understanding and love. And when we find those things, we can't help but share it with others. So share your found love of Jesus with your friends, with your family, because that's what we see Andrew doing here. And once they found him, they stayed all day. It says in here that that was the 10th hour. And of course, it's not like it's 10 o'clock at night or 10 o'clock in the day. I believe that what happens is when the sun comes up, it's usually about six o'clock in the morning. And so that's the first hour. And so if you do the math, 
10 hours after six. It's about four in the afternoon that they stayed with him until the day is pretty much done, but they're staying with him all day. So what do we learn from that? That we should allow Jesus to fill our whole day, fill our whole lives, because he brings so much to our lives and he fills in all those empty spaces, especially during this time now when we find ourselves isolated from other people. We, you know, can't see our friends and family as often as we'd like to. Let Jesus in and spend time with Jesus and he'll fill that void. Because even though we are, we might be alone or we might even find that we're too busy. You know what? Jesus gives us what we need and he gives us that rest. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, it says this. Jesus says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Again, another wonderful promise from Jesus. And Jesus is faithful, and he does give us that rest that we need when we're stressed and busy throughout life. And he brings us that comfort when we find that we're alone and without anyone. And so we prepare, we prepare for a message. And we hear that message when we're prepared, we can hear that message. And when we hear the message, we follow. And when we follow, we learn that God knows us. Final verse here, verse 42, we read, he brought him to Jesus. And now when Jesus looked at him, he said, you are Simon, son of Jonah. You shall be called Kephas, which is translated a stone. Simon had never met this man. And as far as anybody thought, Jesus had never met Simon, but he knew him. He knew him. He knew his father. He knew his family. He knew where he came from. God knows us. And he wants to tell us his plan because he goes on and says, you are the rock. In other translations, we hear that he wants to build his church on this rock, a firm foundation. And in fact, Peter tells us himself about the stones. And if we go into 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 to 6, we read this. Coming to him as a living stone, rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also as living stones are being built up, a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Yes, we have been chosen we are those living stones, just as Jesus said to Peter, that he is the rock of this foundation. So come and see what God has planned for you through his son, through Jesus. And I say that this Lenten season, there's much for us to contemplate, much for us to do to prepare our hearts our minds, and our souls for Jesus to enter in, to fill us with his love, to fill us with his peace, and to give us the salvation that comes at the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Charlene. Our final hymn today is actually by special request from Charlene. It's her favorite hymn, and that's already, I think, reason enough after she's blessed us with her message for us to sing it together with her. But it also fits our Lenten theme. Verse four of the hymn says, long imprisoned our spirits lay, fast bound in sin, 
and nature's night. But God's eye was like a quickening ray. We woke and our hearts were free. Let's sing Amazing Love. you all for indulging me in that wonderful song. I do, uh, I do love it. Every time I sing it, it, it brings my heart to, to joy to know that Jesus has done this for me, that he knows me and he has died for me. And so for a benediction, I will say a short prayer and uh, I'll bring us um, 
a, a Bible verse. So if you want to pray with me, Heavenly Father, thank you again for this time. Thank you for your love, Lord, and thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus brings. I pray that you would continue to bless everyone here this morning and everyone who's able to hear your message, Lord, that we would be prepared and we would hear and follow and know your plan for us. And now to him by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Oh,